Okay, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter two is payment installment. Write a program that asks the user to enter the amount of, of a purchase and the desired number of payment installments. The program should add 5% to the amount to get the total purchase amount and, and then divide it by the desired number of installments. Then display messages telling the user the total amount of purchase of the purchase and how much each installment will cost. All right, so the user is going to type in an amount of say $5,000 and then we're going to add 5% to that, to that amount. And then we're going to divide that total amount by however many times or however many months, for example, the user wants to pay this amount and then we're going to display it. So let's just take it step by step. So write a program that asks the user to enter the amount of the purchase and then the desired number of payment installments. So let's do that. Let's prompt the user to type in the amount of a purchase. So we're going to call the input function and then the input function takes in a prompt what we want to display to the user. We're going to ask the user to please enter the amount of a purchase. Okay, so the input function is going to pop up some kind of text box and then it's going to allow the user to type in something. Now, whatever the user types is going to be returned back to us as a string. So when it's being returned back to us, we need a place to store it. Since this is, I need to fix this here. Since this is going to be the purchase amount, I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it purchase amount to store this value. So purchase amount is going to be equal to whatever the in input function is going to return. Now, we're going to be doing some math on this value but the input function by default always returns a string. And so in order to do some math on that value, on the purchase amount that the user just typed, we need to make sure that this is converted to a floating point value, a float, right? Because the user can type in $5,556, right? So $5,500.56. And so we need to make sure this is a float. And so I'm going to call the float function around everything that the input function is returning. All right, so I'm converting that to a float and storing it in purchase amount. Now the question also says that after, after we ask the user to enter the amount of a purchase, we should also ask the user to, to enter the desired number of payment installment. Okay, so we're going to use the same input function to ask the user to type in the payment installment. So please, or let's just ask the user, how many payments um, do you want uh, to pay this off? Something, something like that, All right? So colon here, I'm just gonna put a colon here. Um, again, the input function is going to pop up some kind of text box and it's going to allow the user to type in something. Whatever the user types is going to be returned back to us as a string. And so when it's being returned, we need a place to store it. This is going to be payment installment. So the number of payments installments, I'm going to create a variable and call it number of payments, something like that, or number of installments. So number of installments is going to store that value. Again, the input function always returns a string by default. And since we're going to perform some kind of math or use this value in some kind of math operation, we need to make sure that whatever is being returned is converted to a, a number in this case an int an integer because a uh, number of installments it's going to be the one two three four five or so on and so forth so i'm going to convert everything that the input function is returning to an int so i'm wrapping the int function around everything that the input function is returning and then storing it storing it in number of installments so I do not I don't I don't know if you see this line over here this gray line so this gray line is a guide for me to make sure I'm typing 80 characters in a line it's a Python standard to make sure that I'm typing you know I'm, we're, we're typing 80 characters in a line if you don't do it nothing nothing doesn't nothing happens but it's a Python standard and I want to stick to it so I'm going to break this line into two as long as it's in parentheses if you uh, break it uh, without adding the, the line continuation character, you're fine. But 
I'm always going to add a line continuation character just out of habit. So to break this line into two, I'm going to close the string here and then concatenate it with the beginning of the string. So I have one string here and I'm just concatenating it with another string. Now that allows me to break it somewhere around here. So to break this line, I'm going to type in a backslash and then hit enter. Like I said, if it's in parentheses, if whatever you're trying to break is in parentheses, you don't necessarily need the backslash, but out of habit, I'm going to add the backslash. Okay, so I have my purchase amount. I have my number of installments. <clears throat> All right, so it says the program should add 5% to the amount to get the total purchase amount. Now, so let's just pause there. Add 5% to the amount to get the total purchase amount. We have the amount. We can add 5% to it to get a total purchase amount. So let's first add 5% to that. So 5%, um, and since this number is going to be fixed, it's 5%, let's just store it in the name constant, right? So let's call this, um, I guess, installment fee. So installment, actually installment fee percentage, because this is just the percentage, and that's 5%. Now, 5% is the same as 5 divided by 100. So you could do that, or you could type in the answer. 5 divided by 100 is 0 0.05. That's 5%. So that's the percentage. And then to calculate the like 5% of the amount, right? the program should add 5% to the amount. Um, let's go ahead. And, and let's calculate that and then and then add 5% to the purchase amount. So let's see here how we're going to do this. I, I don't want to do it in separate lines here. I'm trying to... Okay, so let's let's calculate 5% of the purchase amount first. All right, so purchase amount times 5%, which is the installment fee percentage. This here is going to give us the total purchase amount, right? It says the program should add 5% to the amount to get the total purchase amount. So now let's go ahead and create a variable, call it total purchase amount. And that's going to store 5% of the purchase amounts, the initial purchase amount by the user. Now the, the question says, um, and then divide it by the desired number of installments. So after we have the total purchase amount, let's go ahead and divide it by the total number of installments which we have stored here. And so here, um, then display, let's see, divide it by the desired number of installments. Then display message is telling the user the total amount of the purchase and how much each installment will cost. All right, so we have the total amount, the total purchase amount here. How much each installment will cost will be the total purchase amount divided by the number of installments. So total purchase amount divided by the number of installments is going to give us how much each installment will be. So I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it each installment. And that's going to be the total purchase amount divided by number of installments. So now we have everything we need to display, right? Because the question says then display messages Display messages telling the user the total amount of the purchase and how much each installment will cost. Okay, so let's use the print function display um, the first value, which is the total uh, amount right here. Let's see the total amount of the purchase. So the total amount of the purchase. And I'm going to actually concatenate that, right? So the total amount of the purchase, concatenate it with um, this value here. This value is going to be a float, right? And if I'm concatenating it with a string, I need to make sure that whatever I'm concatenating it to, like to is also a string. So I'm going to call the str function. Actually, not yet, hold on, not yet. Because we're going to format this value and once we format it, the result will be a string. So I'm concatenating this string to the total purchase amount so we can display it first and foremost. All right, so let's go ahead and format this value so that we can like, so that it can look like a, an actual number value or, or a monetary value. Um, okay, so I'm going to call the format function around it. 
The format function takes in two arguments. It takes in what you want to format, in this case, total purchase amount, and how you want to format it in a format string as a second argument. So inside of this format string, I want this total purchase amount formatted as a floating point value. So I'm going to type in an F, for stands for floating point value. I want this formatted to two decimal places. The precision comes before the conversion character. And so points